Hey guys, Haz here at Shield K9, and um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about the good old snip snip, all right? That is spaying and neutering your dog. There is so many myths out there about this topic. There's so much uh, misconceptions out there about this topic and misinformation, all right? Uh, I get this phone call uh, or a variation on this phone call every other day. We have a dog. Uh, he's aggressive, he's crazy, he's hyper, he dominates other dogs, he humps my wife, whatever it is you can think of, they've got it. We fixed him, but it hasn't changed anything. Or we fixed him and it actually even got worse. All right, I get a variation on that phone call every other day. The other phone call I get is, um, uh, hey, I'd like to send my dog to you for training, uh, but he or she is intact. Will you still train her if, if he or she is intact? If not, I'll go and fix her right now. Uh, guys, I'm a dog trainer. The, the absence or presence of sexual organs on your dog does not impact my ability to train him or her or my team's ability, okay? If there is a dog trainer out there that tells you this, then they're probably not a good dog trainer to go to, okay? Um, any dog trainer worth his or her salt doesn't care whether your dog is intact or not, all right? The only impact might be if your dog is in heat, maybe uh, we're not gonna let her run loose with uh, intact males unsupervised. That'll be it, okay? So it's not a big deal. Now, a lot of people fix and or uh, fix their dogs because they are told by certain pe certain individual not individuals certain entities that it is the responsible thing to do if you're a dog owner those entities are primarily veterinarians retail rescue and other pet owners okay so everybody doesn't want nobody wants to be irresponsible everybody loves their dog everybody wants to do what's best for their dog so a lot of people go this route because they think or they've been told that that's what they should do Let's talk about veterinarians first. Veterinarians, first off, before I criticize you guys, big props. There are a lot of veterinarians out there that lately have been telling people, wait until your dog is at least a year old before you come to me for a neuter because it's not healthy to do it before then. Big props. Thank you very much. I'm glad to see more and more veterinarians are taking this course of action. I've even heard of veterinarians also saying to people with female dogs, wait until the second heat, then we will neuter, then we will fix her. All right? Again, big props. Unfortunately, there are still many veterinarians that recommend early neuter. Now, there's two sides to this. Probably a little bit of ignorance, number one, because back in the day, I think it was, you know, accepted that it was probably a good idea to, to do it as soon as possible to avoid unwanted puppies and to fix it, to avoid unwanted behavior. And number two, um, there's some vested interest, guys. It's probably the most common, it's probably the biggest money maker they have, uh, spaying and neutering. It's the most common surgery that they do. So I'm not saying that they're maliciously telling you to do it, but I am saying that there is some vested interest and it's undeniable. All right, so that's number one. Now we got retail rescues. Retail rescues are those big old rescues like the SPCA, the Humane Society. There's some other big ones I'm not even thinking of right now. Um, and they're the ones that pull in millions of dollars every year in charitable donations. They got big boards of directors and they're lobbying government. These are the ones, they got their fingers in everything. These are not the mom and pop rescues, okay? These are the rescues that are often peddling a bunch of nonsense and basically they exist to perpetrate themselves from what I can see anyways. So they're all about spay and neuter your pets. It's the responsible thing to do. Look, if you got a cat, spay and neuter it, please, for all of our sakes. But if you got a dog, um, it is not necessary that you spay and neuter your dog, all right, um, in order to prevent unwanted puppies from existing. Let's, I'm going to jump quickly to, to the whole topic of breeding. I'm a breeder. I breed dogs. It is not easy for in, for your dog, if you have an intact male, to impregnate a female and vice versa. If you have an intact female, it's not easy for her to be impregnated. Number one, females come into heat twice a year on average. Their, their average heat is between 10 and 14 days, okay? Within that heat cycle, there are maybe three days where she's viable. Three days, if the male gets her on one of those three days, you'll probably have puppies, all right? So that's a very narrow window. Throughout a whole year, maybe there's a total of six, seven days that your dog can be impregnated if you have a female or if you have a male that it, you know, think of how unlikely it is that your male would run into a female that happens to be loose 
and and you aren't there and you're not supervising your dog and and she's in that little window so unlikely it's not not very likely okay um that's number one uh number two let's pretend your intact male met an intact female and she was actually in season and she was ready to go she was in that window guess what it's not a bang bang we're done kind of thing it is generally a long process the average breeding that i've witnessed takes a while for the male to get in there and once he's in there they lock up it's a whole long process. You got plenty of buildup, plenty of warning. If you're a halfway diligent, you could be half asleep, you'll still spot it before it happens and you can take the necessary steps from preventing it from happening. If you own two intact dogs, and by the way, like I said, I got 15 intact male and females and oftentimes they are together. Um, not all of them together, but I have different ones together sometimes. I always know when the females are coming into heat well before they even start bleeding, okay? Um, you notice stuff. Uh, if they're bleeding actively, you'll notice like the, the spots of blood on the floor. You'll notice she starts really peeing, small little peas everywhere. Um, she'll be licking herself a lot. If you have an intact male, his nose will be up her crotch and he'll be real interested in her at least like two weeks before she even starts bleeding. You got lots of worrying, okay? When I notice the female actually starts bleeding, then I'll just separate them for a couple of weeks if I don't want puppies from them, and we're good to go. After that, uh, after that couple of weeks, after she passes that window, she stops bleeding, um, they can go back together. You're not going to have any puppies, all right? So, it's unless you're living in like, I don't know even where they allow dogs to run loose. I mean, if you live in the suburbs, um, you know, which is where everybody lives. If you live in an urban area, nobody's letting their dog run loose. So unless you're letting your dog run loose with other intact dogs unsupervised all day, it's not very likely you're going to get unwanted puppies. If you have two intact dogs and you're halfway paying attention, it's not very likely you're going to get unwanted puppies. So I don't know where all these unwanted puppies are coming from. I mean, I've, I've heard of like native reserves up in, you know, northern Canada where like they let the dogs all run loose and maybe like some third world countries where they do that but here in in Canada you know in, in most of North America I don't think that's really a problem so again I, that's nonsense you know you're not going to get unwanted puppies um, now let's talk about behavior a lot of people are like oh I got an intact male oh I got to be careful around intact females because he, he can't control himself especially if they're in heat what what do you mean he can't control himself that means you haven't been training him I, I, my last intact male that I use for breeding, okay, uh, he's with, he's, he's in, he's in Bahrain right now. Props to you, Adam. Good job. You're, you're taking care of that monster. Anyways, I would use him, I, when I was breeding him actively to females, I would actually make him do obedience with me and then give him the female as a reward. And he knew she was ready to go and he wanted to breed her. And he would listen to me and he would come off of her when he was told to come off of her and he would go to her when he was told to go to her. And he was by no means the, um, a super easy dog to handle, all right? It's just good training, guys. Like if your dog really understands the concept of like if, you know, if your dog understands the concept of have to, you're not going to have problems with your dog around another dog in heat. You know, it's, it's funny. I'm in the sport dog world a little bit. It's my hobby, right? So, um, you know, Everybody is always freaking out when there's a bitch in heat. Oh, she's got to go last. My dog, you know, she's going to screw up my dog. My dog's not going to be able to paint. Come on, guys. Just train your dog to a high level. You know, where you you shouldn't have to worry about your dog screwing off on you because there's a there's a bitch in heat. Like that's nonsense to me, right? If you, if your dog's doing that, then then you got some training problems that you need to fix. But hey, that's just my opinion. Anyways, you know, and then you got the other pet owners. Oh, he's got his balls. Aren't you worried he's going to hump you? Or, you know, aren't you worried you're going to get puppies? I mean, look, if I had a if I had a nickel for every time um, somebody else that owns dogs thought they, uh, you know, shared their wisdom with me, I'd be a millionaire, all right? Pay no attention. You know better, so do better, all right, guys? So let's go over this again. Let's Let's try and summarize things. Spaying and neutering your dog will not change your dog's behavior, okay? Spaying and neutering your dog will not make it less likely you have, well, it will make it less likely technically that you, you'll have unwanted puppies, but guess what will also make that less likely? Good training and halfway decent supervision, all right? So, if I was, if it was me, I would not 
spay and neuter a dog, and I do not spay and neuter dogs, uh, my dogs, unless there's a medical reason to do it. Let's talk about possible medical reasons to spay and neuter. Reason number one, uh, you got a male with an undescended testicle. Still wait till he's two years old, then get him cut. Because that undescended testicle, um, number one, it makes him inviolable for breeding. He shouldn't breed because you don't want to pass that on. Number two, um, that, that, that undescended testicle is actually more likely to have cancer than a testicle that is descended. All right? That's number one. Number two, if you have a female that has pyometra infections, yeah, get her, get her spayed. It's, it's for the best. Okay? Number three, if... You are in a position, like if you got a whole bunch of farm dogs and they're just loose on your farm and you're really not, you don't have the time or the inclination to pay attention, some situation like that, all right, you know, wait till the dogs are old enough, then get them fixed, okay? Those are the only circumstances that I would really fix a dog. Maybe there's some medical conditions I'm forgetting about, but other than that, guys, that's really it. Um, don't be bullied into cutting the sexual organs off your dogs in order to make them behave. All right, guys, and this is kind of like a funny thing for me because a lot of people, you know, they'll they'll comment, oh, you know, I don't want to use an e collar, I don't want to use a prong collar, I don't want to correct my dog, but they're all gung ho about rushing their dog to the vet and getting the sexual the sexual organs cut off of them because the dog may behave better. What the heck is that? There's no there's no psychological consistency there. A lot of the retail rescues, and this is my main problem with retail rescues. They're in the business of putting dogs, of rehoming or adopting dogs out. You should think that their vested interest would be that those dogs do as well as they could possibly do in the new home. And a lot of these rescues advocate against effective training methods. They only promote positive only dog training. You realize the vast majority of dogs in rescues have behavioral problems. They need behaviors to be extinguished. Okay. You're promoting the opposite of that. So you're making it more likely that the dogs will never get the help that they need and they'll end up back in your stupid shelter. So, you know, and then they want to, you know, get on their soapbox and talk about spay and neuter. I'm sorry, I, I don't have time for it, right? Um, now, there are some rescues, and I'm going to shout out a rescue right now. Um, Taffy's Legacy. Um, they are a very small rescue. If you get a chance to donate to them, if you're looking for a dog... Uh, maybe go go to them and, and see if they've got anything available. Uh, they care about their dogs. They care about making sure their dogs get the, the training that a dog needs to have in order to do well in, in, in this world. Um, you know, but unfortunately, a lot of the retail rescues, they've been completely subsumed by the positive-only force-free dog training movement. They are not um, at all interested in facts. They're not at all interested in scientific behavioral facts. Uh, they're only interested in, 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 in basically self-perpetuation. Okay? So I got no time for them. I got no time for their nonsense. But other than that, guys, that's my two cents on spaying and neutering. Um, you know, if you have any questions, post them below.